let's get to why the hell you guys are here today for okay so um let me see something real quick what's up hr we need some more rain buddy uh michael s what's good i bet what's good okay so um hey sherelle you can pull that hat off <laughs> trust me <laughs> i look like a dork in it it's one of these flat hats that my son made me get but yeah it's pretty cool pretty cool hey happy friday andrew what's good okay so today we are going to spend a little bit of time doing part two of market structure if you were um if you if you have not seen yet part one you can see that under the recordings under the live events and that's where this one will also be placed once the recording uh is done i do i do plan to spend since april is coming to an end uh this weekend i will be spending a little bit of time wiping out all of the live analysis that are no longer obviously good because there was no really no teachings in there uh for march and probably the first week of april i'll leave the last couple of weeks in case somebody wants to go back and review something so in a month, but it'll be much easier for you to find uh these things in order uh by date okay you can also always use the keyword up there in the search field and um and then like for example if you type in structure everything with structure will come up if you type in sar anything with live so if you do a keyword you'll be able to find it today i'm going to focus it on uh, i'm going to use this chart here just um this is the one i just sent out odd usd structure is structure on every chart and i want to today show you structure uh, again this these these little teachings only last you know 25 to 30 minutes max i want to teach you structure or as long as structure is what i look at on a bigger time frame okay i think there's a lot of folks that are messaging me they're saying they're finally getting it uh, i forgot who it was this morning and says you know what i went to i watched the videos I'm now doing all my structure from four hours or higher, and then I'm just looking for the entries, much smaller, but structure lets me see the bigger picture. Okay, structure lets me see the bigger picture. So I wanna spend a little time today, I'm gonna wipe all this out, and I'm gonna go ahead and take off the SAR, and I'm gonna go over to the weekly. Okay, and I wanna kinda of show you the methodology from a higher time frame we're going to be stopping at the probably at the four hour today okay and then part three is going to be breaking it down into smaller time frames and then part four that'll be the last one of the series that i plan to do is actually how to possibly get again depending on your skill level your comfort level how to look at structure on a five minute three minute and one minute chart to be able to scalp from those three time frames only okay so we're gonna we're kind of working it down part one was kind of an overview today is going to be kind of weekly daily maybe eight hours in there then we'll probably do four one and 30 actually that makes more sense and then we'll walk it down into 15 5 3 and 1 okay so that you can trade at those uh at those levels there 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 are people okay uh i've got some some friends of mine that if you have let me go up here real quick so this chart right here okay this chart right here is a five second chart every candle is five seconds i've got of course this move from here to here is probably only four pips maybe three pips six pips okay so i do have friends of mine who are trading huge lot sizes and they trade on a five second chart they just want three or four pips and get out three or four pips and get out three or four pips for what they trade could be 500 bucks to a thousand bucks okay so uh, we'll eventually just show you this and you can kind of take a look at it not recommended okay but look you you can see here on a five second chart okay on a five second chart you can still see structure you can still see structure on a five second chart of course on five seconds this is five pips or less right you want to grab five pips five pips okay so we'll, we'll work all the way down we'll work all the way down okay so just pretty pretty interesting thing don't know if you even knew did you know that you can have a five second chart let me know in the chat did you know you can trade from a five second chart um so if you didn't know that 
Or if you know that, put it in the chat. So we'll eventually work our way down. We'll eventually work our way down. Okay. So this is going to be... Uh, Okay, she's awesome. This is going to be pretty interactive, right? I need you all to be interactive, interactive, interactive. Okay, so we're going to first work on weekly, daily, and we'll probably end at the eight hour. Eight hour usually mirrors the daily, okay? So uh, when we look at this, this is why it's so important to look to the left. Again, a reminder, you don't need to, to look to the right. Uh, there's a couple of things that can stand out on structure. Okay, so when you look at the weekly, it's important to look at the weekly. This is where the banks are trading, by the way. Okay, when you talk about institutional money, this is where the banks are trading. Okay, obviously, the, the biggest thing that stands out is structure up. I mean, structure down, structure up, and then structure down. Okay, that is the, the clearest structure that you can see there. Okay, what happens is we, including myself, we are not... Um, our brains have not been doing this long enough at this time frame to not freak out, right? That, that's just the only other truth. If you had started your first day trading on the weekly and that's all you did, you would feel comfortable. But we normally don't do this because we normally want to go in at lower time frames, scalp and, and things of that nature. We do not have the fortitude right now to say, and because of swap fees and fees and everything else, people may not want to pay. We won't sit through, you know, durations of trades. Think about it. This was uh, 2018 to 2020. That was a two-year move on structure on odd USD, right? 2,621 points. I don't know what that would have related to in after you take off all the fees and everything else, right? But that's a huge, that's that's the way these moves happen over a long duration of time if you look at structure. So it's important that you look at these higher time frames and something that I even want to do a better job myself working on because at least it lets you know, man, we're not like in this big wave. We should really be only looking for one direction, right? It's pretty clear if you look at this red box area here, right? One main direction stands out. So trying to, you know, buy upstream on a bigger time frame, it'll work on the smaller time frames. But then when we realize, for those of you that like to swing trade and why did it turn around, this is where it's telling you where you should be looking at. Okay. So you can't ignore this on a bigger, bigger time frame. Okay. You can't ignore this on a bigger, bigger time frame. It's pretty clear. Okay. It's pretty clear. So you've got to understand that everything here happens you know, kind of in waves. And even at the weekly time frame, okay, when you look at structure on a weekly time frame, again, this this is why I'm just, I'm so, so big on looking at, um, you know, the FIB levels at, at all these different areas because you're going to have FIB levels reacting at almost every level. But if you're just going to sit and say, hey, I'm going to pick my poison and I'm going to go either into the 78s or, you know what, I'm just going to use the 61.8 as my main bread and butter, right? Then, you, bless you, you've got to be able to uh, look at structure and give yourself the highest probability of where price is most likely to reverse and then develop your game plan on the smaller time frames from there. OK, so if you're if you're dead set on 61.8, you start looking. You don't do anything until price comes down to this area. Right. You start looking at the bigger time frames and you got to be patient. But if you are trading, um, you know, if you're just specific to oil, then you've got to wait for that in oil. If you've got other pairs that you're interested in, you can do this and you're bound to get one or two to possibly trigger per week. And really, that's all you need. Okay, because as we walk down the structure of the different time frames, you're going to see that. Okay, you're going to see that. So, point number one is look at the overall structure, right? Look at the overall structure of whatever instrument or commodity that you're going to trade. Okay, and then you start looking for uh, patterns, okay, on the bigger time frames. Okay, you start looking for patterns. So when you look at this, the first thing that kind of stands out is, okay, we're, we're clearly in a, in a downward trajectory right now, right? So what this allows you to do by looking at structure is to say, okay, I know that I'm in this downward movement, okay? So I want to make sure that 
I begin to say, okay, the next move on a big time frame to the upside is not going to happen until that trend line is broken. Okay. I like to have two is the minimum. Okay. Three is preferred. Okay. To validate that area and not close, but actually validate that area. So now we've got two on this structure point here. So now we start looking at what I call kind of level two analysis, even on the weekly. And what I like to do is I just like to say, okay, I don't need to go back to, you know, April, 2022. Okay. Not yet. I'm not there yet. I want to go to a little bit closer time frame. So I do want to go to 2023. Okay. We are now approaching month number five. And so I'll, I'll want to look at this data and say, okay, that is structure point. That is the highest of 2023. Right. And this here was our low of 2023. Okay. Now, Yes, we're in 2024. I get that. But I want to use at least on this weekly. Again, I want to be able to look at structure and say, okay, where has kind of been the high for the year, the previous year, and the low, which was in October of 2023. Okay. And now we're kind of in this area here. People will call this the triangle where there's different words for this, right? So now you basically say, okay, on a big time frame, I have kind of trapped price in here right? There's only going to be two major moves, major, that can happen. We're either going to break trend line and go higher, or we're going to break the floor of the low for the for 2023, okay, which is the last most recent low, and go further down, okay? So now that we look at structure, we can definitely tell we are still in a, in a downward structure, okay? Does, does, can everyone, I just want to make sure, I want to make sure that I'm doing this, can, can everyone see structure here does everyone can, do we all agree that structure on a big time frame here is descending okay or kind of going down type of thing okay whatever you want to call it okay so overall overall the big picture is descending right We're, even right now even with this weekly candle going up uh and we had put this trade alert on the daily so that's why the odd usd made massive pips Okay, that was a daily star, and I'll, we're going to be doing more trainings on that kind of stuff as well. Uh, and we're going to dive deeper uh, for those of you that choose to move into the mastermind. Um, that this is, you know, this is the big picture. It's descending. Okay, it's descending. But had you taken a little bit of time to look at where price moved from the upside to where the swing low happened, hello, hello. This is why. This is why the daily SAR flipped. We just came right back down to the beautiful area that we love, that I personally, I personally love. Like I, I always call it kind of the blue light special, right? If you can get price down in here, it makes your trading so much easier because can somebody tell me, you've heard me now long enough. And as you guys know, I'm a college professor. I teach leadership courses. I've been teaching for over I don't know, 20 years as well. Um, and so I'm I'm a I'm an educator at heart. So you've heard me say this, right? What what would what is the most most likely outcome? Not always the 100% uh, outcome because nothing in trading is 100%. But if you were to take a position here and price was to go below the 100, what is the most likely outcome? Most likely. And why I always talk about the 100 has to be your exit in that in that scenario. What, what is most likely to happen if we go below the 100? What happens at that point? Yeah, good. Right. There's a, high, there's a high possibility. There's a high possibility that price just continues going in this direction. In this direction. We continue going down, right? Now, <coughs> if you look at this, level right here this is a whole different fib level than this fib level okay this is a much higher fib level if you do this turnaround right here okay we, we kind of showed you that before so now that we kind of understand on the big time frame we're descending but that doesn't mean that we can't take a, a good counter trend because price has to breathe price does not go in one direction forever 
right? Now, if you look here, one, two, three, four, five, this was six weeks of drop, a small up, another drop, a couple small ups, another drop, and then we started this climb back up here, okay? So this area right here on a big time frame, uh, in, in my opinion, right, was pretty simple to look at if you were looking at the big picture and then you just threw a couple of analytics into it let alone right let alone when we get when we gave this right we have another little assistant right we pay our assistants and so we already had from this area if this we never even we haven't even looked at a five minute 15 minute one hour so when people say i got a trade from a from a small time frame that's i get the concept but it's really a fallacy does, does it really matter like if you are going to get in here on a 15 minute time frame or on a daily time frame if you're getting in at you know 0.6400 it doesn't really matter what time frame you have the only difference is that when this daily sar which is when i gave this alert uh said we had closed we had our first daily sar okay we now had confirmation on a bigger time frame this wasn't a 15 minute candle that tricked you this was concrete like this was hey we've got a strong move on a major time frame okay on a major time frame because structure had been broken okay so th this is why you know going to the higher time frames um uh, as and i gotta go back and look who who messaged me today uh is gonna give you in my opinion right the the, the real move okay the real move uh and and you can scalp in this time frame, I mean, if I if I told you what this candle was, it's probably a whole bunch of, of pips in just one daily candle. So you could that's 40 pips. You can still be a scalper, right? You can still, but you're gonna to me, you're validating the move more than on a 15 minute candle. You're validating the move more than like on a 15 minute candle because you're seeing now that we we already know this. Um, and again, I'll, I'll share with you. Uh, those of you in the master, I'm going to be sharing you some books that I would highly encourage you to read. It talks about money concepts. This is where I learned this stuff, right? On on these big candles and things like that. Um, this is where you can see these. This is just you know big institutional moves that are coming in. Okay, big institutional moves because if you just look at this uh, price action here, right? If you look at all of these different areas, right? After big drops, there's got to be they come back up to liquefy when there's a big move up they come back to liquefy their liquidity. There's a big move up, they come back to liquefy their moves. There's more food down, now they're liquefying their move. There's a lot of institutional money still sitting up in these areas, right? Where more than likely odd USD will continue to go on a bigger time frame, right? But that doesn't mean that there's not gonna be pullbacks. But my point in showing you this this morning is to kind of begin to change some of the mindset of saying, oh, I've got to be at a 15 minute chart. There's a lot more inconclusive evidence. The, the lower you go, the more inconclusive that trading could be. So by looking at structure on a high time frame, you can begin to, to validate and look at the big picture and then look for entries uh, no lower than the eight hour time frame because structure is going to validate. And this is why I'm a big proponent for existing traders, new traders, experienced traders. I've been doing this for a while. And uh, again, we counter trend sometimes. But man, if you want to bring, if you want to take your trading to 80, 90% success rate, and you can be disciplined, okay? And listen, I have my faults. At times I, I get undisciplined and, I, and I, I find a good fib level and a good uh, support and resistance area may not necessarily have the the star flip but i've been doing it for a while where i understand okay this is this is a high probability but if you are coming here to this group and you've been struggling and you haven't had the results and you tell yourself you will do nothing other than four hours or higher with a star flip confirmation coming off a major zone you are going to have about a 90 percent win rate guaranteed 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 uh, so, you know, it's just a matter of disciplining the mind to say, okay, I know I've been doing it this way. I'm going to, I'd rather have less opportunities and consistent pips than more opportunities and a 50-50 bag 
if that's making the sense. So this is where, okay, I got you. Um, this is where, you know, we're going to, this is where I'm going to be living a lot more. This is where I'm going to be sharing a lot more because I think if you saw, for example, um, this particular pair, right, where when we gave out the alert, again, we've had now what well, happened on day two, but one, two, three, four, this is the fifth day that price has come up. Your probability, again, uh, we'll do more training on the on the SAR, but because we know structure, this still is only considered a pullback, okay? But on a daily time frame, there's a lot of pips to be made even on a pullback, right? It's a pullback because we know on the weekly, the trend is still down. So it's just a retracement right now, right? It's not a retracement until the trend is broken. The trend will be broken when there's a SAR to the bottom. Well, basically, we'll have to clear this area right in here before we, we, uh, we break the trend back up to the upside, okay? So, uh, and the daily SAR probably will flip as we get up to this area anyways. Um, but we'll have to clear that. But what a great way to be able to look at structure from a big standpoint and say, okay, I know where structure is. I've got I've got my confirmations. All you got to do now is just pull the trigger and be patient. And whether you want to scalp it, whether you want to take it longer, right, it's there for you. So looking at structure from a weekly standpoint, right, allows you to see, obviously, the big, big picture, right? I'm just going to move this here, right? Then we drop down to the daily, okay? And now we look at, at current structure, right? And if you just back this up a little bit on structure, now I, I showed you before the high and the low of the weekly. Now, if you've seen my videos long enough, you usually will see me do something like this. I'll look again at the high, and then I'll look at the low, okay? Now I want to do it within a, a relative time frame, okay? Relative time frame. So I'm going to go back here to this low here. And again, you can see here, right? We, we, are, we are trapping kind of price there. And then what I like to do is I like to move up from the most recent low, and all I'm looking for are touch points, okay? Touch points in both directions. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect because I want to be able to see, right? If I look at this on a daily, and we'll go to the eight hour here. If I look here at eight hour, all I got to do is say, okay, I'm going to move this down a little bit because it's cleaner on the eight hour. You can see here now, it's much cleaner. This is just a false breakout. I don't want to consider one false breakout when I have all these touches here, 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 here. That's just a false breakout, right? And so now what this allows you to do only on the higher time frames, right? It lets you look at a couple different things. Well, I'd, I love wicks, okay? Where wicks go, price eventually returns, okay? Well, I, I like when there's big long wicks like this because this means there's a big power move that happened to push price up. So I like to look at wicks. So when price does come back down there, I know where they like to go. So from here, somebody tell me so many ways that you could have, so many ways that you could have done this into a second and third trade. So you take that initial trade and let's say you close it, right? You got your pips, you close it. Now, here is where dropping down, I'm going to be stopping at the eight hour today. Um, this is where you can look for to get in a second dairy trade or maybe it's your third trade. Somebody tell me what this was right here. Somebody tell me what that was. Boom, all right. You guys are paying attention. Sheila B got it. Break and retest, break and retest, Michelle. Uh, Sherelle, the attacks. No, no, no. Structure. We're talking about trading structure. Yeah, broken and then retest. Yep. Uh, Renee, yeah, you know what? I'm not a big fan of triple tops, double tops. I think that's, you know, some people use it. I just think that sets up traders for getting too comfortable with that and then boom, it blows through it. So uh, I don't, I don't really. Uh, I don't pay too much attention to those double bottoms, triple tops. What you can see here, though, is right, is the break and retest. Okay, price came back down to a level. And this to me is, is you know, almost just as easy, right, than, than the bigger time frame. Because here's why. Watch what you do here. This is all you remember. We're on an eight hour chart, folks. We're on an eight hour chart. You don't need to go any lower 
than an eight-hour chart. Because number one is if you turn this on, you number one is you still have validation that we're in an upswing, right? Remember, we're 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 here right now. Let's do the bar replay. Okay, so great learning tool. So we're here right now, right? We're here right now. We know we've identified that this area, and guys, remember, ladies, remember. You can never consider a straight line. You, you normally will see me put a white line so because it's much clearer, but you've got to understand, and this is why when you see my charts, I never give you one price point. It's impossible to predict one price point, right? Like some of the charts today, right? Some of it got close to that yellow box, and then boom, took off up there. You, it's, it's hard. You can sit and miss a trade. That's fine. If you didn't get into the trade, you didn't get into the trade, right? But you were you were disciplined. You waited for your price point. It didn't happen. It happens to me all the time. You have to live and die with that, right? You have to live and die with when they do come into the area or when they fall a little bit short. Some people are aggressive traders. They sometimes get a little bit early. That's fine too. You've got to be able to pick that style for you. So here you tell yourself, okay, we know we're swinging up. Bruno said it, right? The moment this candle closed above, that is your telltale sign. You've got to change your thought process Again, let me remind you, we are sitting on an eight-hour chart. This has nothing to do with 4, 1, 30, right? Entry is entry, right? you got to be able to tell yourself, okay, when you see this red candle, right, you should tell yourself, okay, this is an eight-hour candle that has been trending down now for a while, so we have validation that price has reversed. This is all you need to do and then formulate your plan. I always add a FIB level. Where did price do its last push up from the bottom? Okay, so I would take this green candle. That's the last push up, right? That's the first green candle back up, and I would throw a FIB level where price reversed. It's pretty clear here, okay? It's pretty clear here, okay? I know I get a lot of questions about that, okay? I, I like Everybody does it a little bit different. I like to use, I usually like to use in the case like this where we see a big boom. That's a big candle. Pushing up that isn't a small little candle. That's a big candle. I like to use the bottom of that wick to where we definitely have price turning around. Does everybody see that? Does everybody see that? Does everybody see that? Okay. So we're at the bottom of this green candle, right? So let's ask yourself, you've got to put yourself in a position like you are trying to sell whatever it is that you want to sell or you're a prosecutor in the courts of law, you've got to justify your case. If you can slow down a little bit and justify why you're taking something, if I justify my trade and I lose it, man, I, I sleep very well, right? It's the impulsive trade that every once in a while we lose. And we say, damn, that wasn't even set up. Why did I take it, right? We all do that. We all do that. It's human nature sometimes, right? We get impulsive. So here now, I've got star confirmation, number one. I'm on a high time frame, number two. Uh, number three, structure has been broken to the upside. Number four, price is retracing down. Number five is I now add a Fibonacci level, and I'm looking for a retest in that area, which ironically, if you look right over here, is near the 61.8, is near the 61.8. So now I set up my pending order. You're going you're gonna to go to bed. You want to set up... Uh, you want to set up a, uh, in this case, a buy limit order, right? Which means it's going to come down and trigger. Hopefully while you're sleeping, you're making some profits. Then this becomes a long position on a high time frame somewhere in here, right? Let's say you do it right at the 61.8. The goal is always to take it back to the 100 where it came from. This is where it left. It left the train station. That's always the goal. And the stop loss, as you know, has to be the 100. Has to be the most recent low on this wick where price took off. So it, it makes it very easy. Your, your stop loss, the 100 will match where you start your FIB level. Does everybody see that? The 100 matches where your FIB level started. It makes, it makes it easier for you to understand where your positioning goes. Does everybody see that? That the 100 always matches the bottom of the FIB level. Does everyone see that? So there's no guessing. And does everyone see that the zero is always where you're the top of your FIB level where price, where you put your FIB level because price obviously began is, is declined down. Does everyone see that? Does everyone see that? So we've got, we know where the bottom is and we know where the top is, right? Now 
we set up our brackets, we set up our pending order, we stay awake all night watching this thing, whatever you want to do, and then we just let Price, I'm going to slow this down a little bit, we let we let Price do his thing. We never left an eight-hour time frame, right? We never left an eight-hour time frame. We did everything on an eight-hour time frame, okay? So Price comes down. Maybe you missed it by a couple pips. Maybe you got it. Where did Price come back to, right? One, two... Within 16 hours, they came back. Uh, so price triggered roughly at about 9 a.m. on a Wednesday, and price closed uh, on Thursday at 1 o'clock in the morning uh, pre-London. Okay? So for 24 hours, let's just say 24 hours, right, you held this trade, and I never moved this over here. That would have been the positioning, right? That would have been the positioning, and you targeted – I don't know, what was this? I am always conservative. 40 pips, maybe 50 pips? All right, 43. Let's just, call, let's just call it 38. Let's take off a few pips for spread. So you got 30 pips, okay? You got 30 pips. You got 20 pips. Let's do the 20 pip challenge. You got 20 pips, right? We never had to go down to the 5, the 10. You let a bigger time frame, right? You let market structure on a higher time frame. You started at the weekly. You realized the trend was up. You went to the daily, right? You saw that you had a SAR uh, confirmation. Then you drop it down to the eight hour, which kind of mirrors the, the daily. But you already had taken pips from this SAR up here, but you wanted to look for another entry, right? And again, this is why I think it's so important that too many traders lose sight. And again, between giving you all the value myself, you know how many entries I miss of perfect retest, but I'm either on a live analysis, I'm either sharing charts with you guys. But if you were to stay, right, if you were to stay on a chart, you could set an alert and say, okay, let me look for the next retest. I'm, this is trending up. Here's my level. I'm going to put an alert here, and then I'm going to wait to see if this scenario happens. You can come back when your alert goes off. That's why I'm real big on the, I do set a lot of alerts on TradingView, and that's how a lot of charts that I share with you are only based because, not because I remember, I can barely remember what the hell I did yesterday. But the alerts brings me back to the chart and says, oh, like today, I had totally forgot odd USD. We had put this out, right? But today I got my alert. Hey, trade closed. That's why I put that chart out. So I live off alerts, right? Because when I'm not with you guys live or sharing live, I'm not sitting here at my computer watching the screens. I have purposely already set alerts at different areas to alert me to either get into a trade, share a chart with you guys, do both, whatever the case may be. So this is where you can look at structure from a bigger time frame. And this structure methodology works on any time frame, I mean, on, on any chart, right? You can look at structure. And I'm going to encourage you to maybe this weekend spend a little time starting at the weekly, going to the daily, going to the eight hour, and just begin to look at charts. Doesn't mean that you're going to take action right now if you don't feel comfortable, but start looking at charts from a bigger time frame because that's where the big moves are at. Because if you're sitting on an eight hour, right, and you've already got your first SAR confirmation here that happened on this candle, okay, and this only happened because structure was broken right here. So I always call it a TP hut. Very, very easy to tell when the SAR is going to happen, right? There's your TP hut, right? Somewhere right in this area, the SAR was created. Right. So once that star was created, you know now, and whether it's on the eight hour, obviously the eight hour is going to happen probably a little bit faster than the daily, uh, or the daily, you've got your confirmation. You've got your confirmation. So now on a bigger time frame, right, you can begin to look at and say, okay, all I need to do is let me set up my major levels, right? And maybe up here was a this was a level here. Because if you look here. Right? Look what happened right here. Look where I put that, just ironically. Look what happened here. Right? Price came down, hit, and came down. Hello. Price came down, hit, and came down. So th this is why, this is why, and look where price is at right now. Ironically, look where price is right now. And look what's reversing. Right? So this is where you can really set yourself up for high probability because if you take a sell here, right? And and you say, okay, I'm going to take a sell from this area. It's, it's right back in that area, right? You're, and you guys see me doing this recently to help out more people. It's very simple. If you're going to take a sell back at this level here, your exit has to be right above. So it's, it's a win-win scenario, but 
do you also know that because structure on the big time frame, what did we identify with structure was happening? Was structure going up or was structure going down on this pair that we've been analyzing today? On the big time frame, the biggest one we've seen, uh, odd USD, was structure going up or was structure going down? On the weekly, on the weekly. Were we going up or were we going down? It's the way I started the video. No, not up. So the opposite was down. Remember, the structure was down on the weekly. Okay. So now we are hitting another area where price has shown that has not been able to climb above uh, since April 5th. Right. So you can take a trade like this. And if you're wrong, I'll take these. Um, and again, if you just if you just did a counter fib on this thing here, you would also see that too. Uh, let me drop this here. Okay. Let me just clean out some of this. So you can get a little bit clearer perspective. Okay, so if you were to look at this here, right? Again, there's different patterns. This is this is doing now what's called the teacup. Okay, you've heard me talk about it. Unless you just started here, right? Price comes back up to the point where it started. It creates a teacup. What happens after? Does everybody see the cup? I'm not an artist. Usually after a teacup, and it's not 100% of the time, as you can see right here, right? This one blew right through it. Not 100% of the time, but here's your when you see the red candle here, now you can validate that you're getting the, the handle, right? Where you hold the teacup. Typically, typically after the handle is created, whether it's a small handle or big handle, price continues to the upside. Price continues to the upside. Okay. And I'm 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 fairly confident that this is what's going to happen here. It's just doing a retracement because there's a lot of liquidity sitting in that candle. Today, though, you were able to see. Let me go back over here. Uh, you were able to see that. Let me close this up. You were able to see that on the higher time frame, weekly, daily, and eight hour, which for the most part is going to mirror daily, you can do an awesome analysis and you can get into awesome entries with validation of market structure because that's the real market structure. 15 minutes is not market structure. One hour, in my opinion, is not market structure. It's intraday trading. And the reason why we realize, oh my God, how come the trade just took off? Okay, because on the bigger time frame, market structure was telling you either going with the trend or what have you. Obviously, when we're in the bigger time frame, going with that trend is going to be most important. You don't want to swim uphill. And that's why the bigger time frames gives you more validity of that movement. So just to recap, if you look at big time frames, you have a SAR validation, for example, like we did today on the daily. You can then just set up a couple quick structure points and you can find entries never dropping below the eight hour time frame. Okay. That's real market move. That's long term moves. That's people that want to swing trade. But guess what? If you're going to swing trade 100, before you get to 100, you got to get to 20, you got to get to 30. So you can still catch your pips. Great way for you to get into multiple entries. You lower your lot size, you get two entries in, you cash out the first one at 20, you protect the second one, we'll be talking more about this, and then you let one go as a runner off of market structure on a higher time frame. okay? So as we go through the different parts and we walk it down, you're going to see that you'll be able to get pips, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult because the overall trend, you're going to see that we're going to have to uh, swim more upstream on the smaller time frames to get some better entries and this is why a lot of times we uh go in with just zones without a SAR confirmation because by the time that SAR confirmation happened we just gave up 20 30 pips if you're going to be intraday trading so that's the difference between the two intraday trading you probably wouldn't want to be at a one hour time frame or lower right if you're looking for market structure uh bigger moves you want to be on the four hours or higher preferably eight hours or higher in my opinion okay so hopefully that made sense uh, today, if you got some value, let me know in the comments uh, if you were able to uh, take a look at that. So I will be posting uh, this replay here. Uh, again, I want to stay focused. I'm not going to be, uh, we're not going to be looking at charts. Today was kind of a member training uh, that we like to do. So hopefully you understood higher time frame. Uh, so I'm not looking at gold or anything else right now or, or oil. Uh, maybe after I finish here, I got a couple things to do, but I'll take a look at it. It's Friday. We should not be getting into any late trades. What time is it? 
It's going to be 11 o'clock. I just put out the rules early this morning. Getting into a trade at this point, you might be setting yourself up for a disaster uh, because of bots and everything else happening pretty soon. So um, I would encourage you, if you have not yet um, gotten into a trade, uh, do not look to get into uh, any type of trade for the rest of the day. And, and you've got to build discipline. That, that's what it took for me eventually. Every once in a while, if I, you know, I, I may get into a Friday trade, I'll say, hey, I'm getting into this Friday trade. But for the most part, 95%, I don't trade on Friday. That's just, I, I deducted that out of my trading plan because I saw I was, trying to, I was trying to do something on a Friday and force it to end the week, and it hardly ever worked out. So number two is it gives you an extra day just to see where the market's closed, right? Kind of enjoy, extend the weekend a little bit, declutter from four days of, of heavier trading. And so, uh, you know, definitely something that I just personally, you know, do not do overnight. Yes, first thing, six o'clock in the morning. But again, you should not be looking at the time now. It's about to be 11. You should not be getting into any new trades uh, at this point. Uh, I know there was some market news, I think, at 10. So we've been doing this. So again, I'm not in anything right now. So not even looking at it. Uh, but once I finish here, uh, I'll look at the charts real quick. And if I see something, uh, I'll put it out for the rest of you that want to, you know, do that kind of stuff on a Friday. All right. All right. I'll put this recording. I uh, hope you got some value. Part three uh, will be dropping down four, one, and 30 minutes. And then part four, we're going to be dropping down 15, five, and we'll even go into the five, the one minute and the five second chart, just so you can kind of see some things uh, there as well. Okay. Have a good weekend. Have a good Friday. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Don't forget to be kind to someone this weekend if you can donate give back volunteer whatever it is do something that's bigger than you stop being so self-centered and give back because there's a lot of people who can use a hand there's a lot of locations that can use some free help right uh give back and uh watch how you are rewarded when the time is right okay awesome have a good weekend have a good friday uh you're gonna see a post from me probably later this afternoon letting you know when this weekend uh so those of you here on the live just to give you a heads up it'll probably be out um saturday afternoon but you're gonna get a heads up at what time i'm gonna post it uh i'm only opening the door for 20 folks on the mastermind so uh that will be out this weekend so you'll get an, a message everybody will get because I want to give everybody the same opportunity to be able to go in once that link is provided. All right. Have a good weekend. We'll see you soon.